Welcome back to another episode of Your Road to Home. I'm Kendra Badgecar with LPT Realty here with Maxine Carey, Guardian Mortgage. We are so excited today to be hitting the road with Dean Rummel, who is the Executive Director of the, Par the Carbon Valley Parks and Recreation District. Um, we're excited to see what he has to say about what's coming up in our community here and how the Recreation Center can help serve our local area. So we're gonna head around the corner here and get Dean in the car. Perfect. Here comes the man of the hour. Is Dean our first male guest? He is. <gasps> oh, that's yeah. kind of a big deal. It is a big deal. Hi, Dean. Hi. Hello. We just realized you're actually our first male guest on the show. Oh, wow. Look at that. Wow. What an honor <laughs> for you today. <laughs> Are Super. you okay with women drivers? Oh, um, yes. Absolutely. <laughs> Good I'm, answer. On the record. Yes. Good answer. <laughs> you're on the record. Perfect. That's awesome. All right. Well, Dean, we are super excited for you to be here with us today. Thanks for taking some time out of your schedule. Um, why don't we start with a little bit about you and your back history and how you got started here at the Rec Center? Oh, sure. Um, well, I've been with Carbon Valley Parks and Rec for about, well, I'll be starting six years um, oh, wow. this summer. So it's so been here a little while. Um, I was with the city of Boulder for about 14 years before that. And then kind of did the YMCA circuit around Kansas City for a few years, but um, have a, a college degree in Parks and Recreation Management. Um, oh. And then, you know, pushing 20 odd years of just being in the, in the field working. So, um, you know, anywhere from, I, I like to tell a lot of our staff, even if I started, my very first job was folding towels in the basement of a YMCA, nice. right? So I'm um, kind of just, Kind of worked worked the way through um, with education and then just years of service. So um, I've, it's been great since I've been here. Uh, you know, I'm sure we're going to talk about it through the the drive, but just the growth and opportunity that we have in Carbon Valley just mm -hmm. is so exciting and uh, and just keeps us moving every day. So were you here when they built the first rec center? No. Okay, so you come on that was existing already? Uh, yes, that, that one was existing because um, that rec center has uh, been up and operating about 22 years, believe it or not. Oh, already. wow. I didn't so really? That. It is much older than one would think when you walk in. So, wow, it uh, we, certainly is. Yeah. Um, you know, take a lot of pride of keeping that one looking nice yeah. and, and, you know, routine maintenance and just trying to add things as we can. But, uh, you know, the vision they had at that rec center way before me. So I. I'll give them props all the time of how, how they built that rec center and how, you know, what a jewel that probably had to be for this community so long ago. Right. Um, we celebrated 40 years last summer of just being a district in the community. So um, 40, oh, wow. 41 years ago yeah. now is when the official, first official vote to make us uh, a district inside of Carbon Valley with the first official um, board of directors. So we're, we're on 41 years now. So um, the community has definitely changed in that time. Absolutely. Man, that's impressive to hear. I love, one of the things I love about this podcast is learning more about the history of this yeah. area, different things, you know, I mean, that's, I had no idea. Yeah, you know, we had, um, of course, none of the staff were here 40 years ago that, that work here now, right. but um, we have in a, 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 a savings box at one of the local banks, all the original paperwork on the district. Wow. So I, I had to go and you know find the magic key to get me into that, and found all the original documentation wow. of you know 41 years ago of the first ever election to make as a district, and again the board of directors that were voted in. Um, pretty remarkable. Um, okay. You know, part of just our our path and our timeline there is just over about 4,000 people in the Carbon Valley area when uh when the Parks and Rec District was formed. 4,000. 4, now there's 44,000. Yes. <laughs> wow that's incredible. That's awesome. Yeah well so you've seen lots of changes in the district and upcoming request for a bond to absolutely add. Yeah you know um people ask that question quite a bit and we started our process since I've been here back in 2019 of just original surveys out to people and just, just knowing, you know, that current rec center is near 20 years. The, the growth year after year after year is just, it's insane how fast it's moving. I mean, we see it in the housing building and, and just businesses coming in and, you know, 
the need for more schools and, and all those things. We're right, right right in line with all of those. Um, but between, you know, a, a misconception we do have in the community is we're not a part of any of the towns, right? Like we, we are our separate governmental agency in Carbon Valley. Um, so we get that, we get that from time to time, right? Like, you know, you sh we should probably fix that pothole or that road before this and that, um, but we're a whole different funding source as well. Um, we have, we have no authority over, you know, road conditions and things like that, which sure. is, which is different if you're not used to, to a special district, um, that we're not a part of any of the municipality services and, and overarching, you know, like mm -hmm. guidance. So, um, you know, in that time we've done our research and our surveys, each, both towns and city. So town of Frederick, town of Firestone, city of Decono, that's our main, our main boundary, um, have done individual, you know, um, community surveys where parks and recreation services, um, parks, and rec centers, an outdoor pool, they just keep being high up, if not top one, two, three, mm -hmm. and, and so much of their feedback coming back. Um, so we're right in line with what we're all hearing from the from the residents. It's just, you know, moving that needle and being able to to grow with the town, um, with the community as fast as the community is growing is is definitely a challenge we have right now. Yeah. Um, the current rec center is pretty landlocked, meaning um, there's housing on two of the sides and roads on two of the sides. Yeah. So we um, we're just finishing up a project of actually what can we do at that site. Um, for remodeling and maybe a little bit of an addition. Mm -hmm. But again, there's only so much we can do with, with parking and space right, and, right. and where we're at. So when that rec center was built, the community um, wasn't much more than that 4,000 um, that, that we have now. So we've, we've definitely quadrupled in the size of that rec center. Again, mm -hmm. great vision of when that one was, was built, but between the surveys and just our internal pressures that we're seeing on you know registrations in our programs um, people just coming through the front door to use the pool the gym the weight room um, all throughout the day um, it's it's definitely time to be looking for for those next steps those next opportunities um, so it did, doesn't it doesn't feel like you've outgrown the space but you know that that feeling is coming up. So that's why you're it's, looking at expanding, right? A hundred percent. You know, internally, it definitely feels like we've outgrown the space. It might depend on when certain people are there. You know, if it's a Saturday and youth basketball yeah. is happening yeah. or, you know, if it's a Friday night and there's no programming happening because it's Friday night. Um, but our numbers um, just keep increasing. Our, one of our biggest stretch things we have right now is the balance of the pool and the gym and say like um, fitness rooms of program space versus open space, right? right. Meaning, um, you know, as, as youth basketball, youth volleyball, pretty much youth of anything keeps growing, growing, growing. Well, the space isn't growing. So right. the as aggressively as that's growing, there's a give and take, right? right. So, um, I mean, I have, I have two daughters myself um, the, the more volleyball and basketball grows, the less opportunity there's for me just to show up with them and shoot baskets, right? right on on right. our leisure that, you know, that's part of having a rec center in your community right. as well. So yeah. there's definitely a big demand on just more space, um, let alone just that, that drop in use. And, you know, um, the rec center was built at the end of downtown Frederick, right? Which at the time was pretty much um, the heart of Carbon Valley, right? And the growth has happened all around us. So, you know, one of our just internal district goals is also to have services and some facility amenities, you know, no more than a 10 minute drive from someone's residence. Um, so, you know, we're, we have the Southern part of the district pretty covered with our current facilities. It's how to really help get that on the Northern side too. Right, where it's expanded a lot, yeah. Yes. So we've got the new bond initiative coming up. I know we had um, Jenna Oliver on recently where we talked about this briefly, but what's the most important aspect of that that you'd like to share with the community as far as how that's going to be affecting us financially 
but knowing how much this is needed in our community and how much of a positive impact this would have for us if it could get passed. Right. Yeah, great. Um, you know, I think the most important aspect is show up and vote. Mm -hmm. um, so then we have a good vote turnout, voter turnout. Um, so we have tried within the last couple of years and, and it didn't pass. It failed about 45 to 55, right? 55% no's, 45% yeses. But the vote but, was terrible. But like there's like, what did Janice say? 250 or something people that voted? No, it was more than that. Um, but we have almost 30,000 voters in our district and about 7,000 voted. Wow. Right, so it's still a pretty small percentage. Yeah, small it's percentage. it's just hard for us to hang our hat on that we we heard from the community with that, right? right. Uh, you know, if twenty thousand show up and vote and it's still a no, that's something to you know right. really go off of, yeah. right? Yeah, um, absolutely. But if if twenty thousand show up and it's a yes, drastic yes, then we really know okay, the community really wants this and it's and it's time to move forward. So right. one just. Uh, the big ask is to know it's going to be on the ballot. Um, it's going to be November is, you know, it's, nothing's official. The board doesn't officially vote on this until um, around August, middle of August in our board meeting. Mm -hmm. But we're trying to just get voter turnout. Um, a presidential election is when historically um, the most voters show up. Mm -hmm. um, it's just it just is compared to an off season or even our own district single eliminations are in May. Well, no one's looking for a vote in May sure. um, or a ballot in your mailbox. So we're really hoping being on the presidential election at least brings out a bigger voter turnout. Mm -hmm. right. um, mm -hmm. And then fully understanding what, what the ask is. You know, um, you know, the three main questions that we're tasked to answer here is what, where, and how much, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, so we're really honing in on the what right now um, with a lot more information to come out really soon just with our architects and, and um, local contractors, um, FCI, uh, with the pricing of, of such a facility. Mm -hmm. And, you know, nothing's getting cheaper. Um, right. And lead time's pretty big on building new facilities. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, the concern would be if it's not passed this time, are we waiting another four years? And then when it is passed, it's, you know, a two, three year build. If it's not, so if it's not passed in November, are we all sitting around waiting another seven, eight years to, to get right. another facility how in town? How much more would it cost at that and time? And how much more does yeah. it cost and how many more residents do we have that are getting turned away because we don't have space for or right. room? Um, so right now we, we are looking, you know, the. We're only funded two ways. Another kind of educational piece. As a special district, we can only be funded through user fees and property tax, right? Um, nobody likes property tax. I, we get it, I get it. Um, but that's the only way we're able to get those large scale um, mill levies passed is through property tax sure. um, within our boundaries. So, you know, we're, we're looking at increasing the possible increase would be um just under a five mil ask um and the when you get talking mills it's so confusing um yeah. and i i know it pretty well and it still kind of you know gets off in tangents and got to kind of come back to the drawing board a little bit but um what that would mean we just some simple numbers that i have to put in perspective i didn't bring my notes with me but i know the Carbon Valley community, the median house value, market value is about $533,000. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Median, right? That right. means definitely some higher and, and some lower ones. Right. On that median house, the ask would be about $160 a year in an increase to property tax um, to, to build, you know, we're looking at a pretty good size outdoor pool with a couple water slides and lazy river. Um, new basketball, volleyball, pickleball, whatever you can do in a gymnasium, um, additional weight room facilities. And, and you know, one of the, the kind of nuances to our last couple plans has been, um, we're hoping to also put in indoor turf. Um, so indoor um, for soccer, lacrosse, baseball, softball, that would be huge. Um, training um, pieces. Um, and, and being able to do that year round, get camps in there. Um, we took some tours of some spaces 
and we had to drive an hour south to find the nearest facility wow. that's anything like this. And once we were south Denver, about every 20, 30 minutes, we stopped at one. Sure. Right? Yep. Um, but there is nothing north of Denver that would be similar to this type of a f facility, which is really exciting too, wow. right? So it's and that seems like a pretty minimal investment for residents to have right. that right? available. Um, you know, and I want to be very careful, right? Because $160, um, you get, you'd get a lot for that, you know, right. over the next 30 years, you know, right. you break that down per monthly in an escrow, you know, it's, it's what, 12, $13 type, type of a deal right. a month. So it's just really getting people to just fully understand and grasp, grasp that, um, you know, we, again, fully aware it's a property tax, um, but understanding that for this amount, we get all of this as a community um, and what it brings to the community. Those, those are kind of the two main takeaways we're hoping to get through in the next couple months. Um, you know, with understanding we need to really start showing the what and the, and the how much and, and the where, um, and, and that's to come really soon. There's, there's kind of a fine line of doing it too early um, and, you know, people kind of forgetting about it and not having the hype that maybe doing it a little bit closer, you know, to June, July, August, and then um, um, having the conversation continuing all the way to November is right, kind of right. our, our goal of the timeline. Well, there's a task force after the August. That's the, that's the hope, right? Yeah. So um, that, that's a good kind of comment just to have because after if our board um, which they're leaning pretty hard at doing it um, certifies to be on the ballot in November we would they would do that in August um, but then after it's certified the, the board and staff um, need to step back a little bit and um, it goes out to the community right it, they need to sell it if you will community support from from the supporters and having you know having the facts is definitely going to be critical um we tried again you know a couple of years ago and there's so much misinformation floating around that it just depends on who chooses to listen to who at sure. the same time right um so is it just the rec district website where people can get updated information we definitely will have a landing page um okay. we're again just kind of waiting for some final concepts to be be put in which we're we should have here in the next week or two and then the website will have um, tons of our information. I'm going to go on a road show to Frederick, Firestone, Decono um, councils and, and give presentations, you know, and, and hopefully get in their support towards this effort as well. But website um, will be the best place to get the most updated things. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Which is uh, cvprd.com, just carbon valley parks rec district.com and then is there like a bond initiative or tab or something like is that what they look for there will be okay. yes okay yeah it'll it'll be right on the home page too i mean um we want to make sure it's not missed for sure got it okay perfect we'll make sure we've got that in the comments so yes. you guys can click Thank on you. and check out for sure yeah well that's some exciting news for the area was probably one of your largest projects obviously going on right now is there anything else that you guys have that you're working on for the community you know um that's definitely the largest next phase mm -hmm. um trying to build something new but and then also trying to um you know do the best with what we currently have mm -hmm. and you know hopefully that remodeling project it'd all be in one ask in november to 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 get both of those done okay. um you know and one of the one of a pretty big misconception um, when we attempted this two years ago was that we were closing the current rec center that sits on 5th Street in Frederick, mm -hmm. um, right? And, and that was extremely far from the truth. We weren't closing it, but I think it, it had this perception that we were building a new rec center, so we're closing the old rec center. And that's, that's not the case. It's just trying to keep up with our, our demand and our need and, um, you know, get, given the community more places to go and expand right. to with us so it's definitely our biggest you know um where y'all picked me up um we our project last year was in collaboration with the town of firestone to we remodeled their old town hall mm -hmm. that sits on grant avenue um and we we created it into a community slash senior center right. where basically uh, monday through friday it serves as our senior center and we um like we've 
they increased the space that the seniors had four times larger, um, which is amazing. We're seeing about 2,000 bodies come through those doors um, a month right now. Wow, that's great. Um, which is a huge increase from our senior room that we had before. So it's been greatly successful. Um, and then it's also, we've, we've just kind of started accepting some rentals for the space as well. So it's a community room with kind of a catering kitchen off of it um, on half of the building. That during the day it's used for fitness classes and senior lunch program and different special events that, that we do with the seniors. But in the evenings and, and uh, weekends, it's available for the community to use as well. So it's just been a great space. We, we were able to open that on uh, January 2nd, so. That's great. Yeah, that's yeah, a great You guys condition. did a beautiful job with that too. Yes, yeah, it looks, thank if you. you haven't been in there yet, stop in and say hi, it's, it's beautiful. Do you guys have any volunteer need there? for any of the senior activities going on? Yeah, um, so the lunch program is a collaboration with um, Weld County, um, and there's always needs to help with the lunch program through them. Um, there's different criteria that volunteers have to have to have for that program, but um, you know, with all the different services we're doing, um, between um, helping at the senior center, definitely volunteer work, our biggest volunteer opportunities, hands down, is just our youth coaches uh, yeah. through, through the sports programs. Um, I mean, hundreds and hundreds of volunteer youth coaches help keep us running how, how we do as a Park and Rec district. Right, for sure. Do you have all those volunteers in place for summer, summer camps? Um, summer camp is, is staff driven. Okay. Um, cause we're a licensed summer camp program with the state of Colorado. Okay. So there, um, there's some pretty strict regulations we have to follow. So, um, between the hours, hours that of experience with youth versus education pieces so um there's not really much volunteer opportunities for the summer camp just okay. based on being a licensed program okay yeah and those are probably filling up fast right yes um pretty much all full all summer yes yeah so if you haven't registered everyone <laughs> last call get, get, yeah. yeah last call is right yep same with swim lessons and mm -hmm. sports programs and gymnastics and mm -hmm. pretty much our, everything we offer hence why we would love to increase into a whole nother building absolutely well if you have any room in your heart to volunteer coach for the sports programs i would highly recommend it i've been volunteering on the soccer side for my kiddos and not that i know a lot about soccer but it has been a very fulfilling and fun actually time for me even That's though awesome. yeah my son's playing on the five and under league right now so it's like <laughs> herding a bunch of cats around the field, but it's super fun to watch them grow and, you know, learn how to be part of a team. So if it's in your heart out there, volunteer. Yes, thank you. That's my plug. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Well, what's a little bit more about you? Like what, what do you, what's your job there at the rec center? And what do you get your hands into there? Well, you sound like my mom. Ah, sorry, <laughs> so, I'm sorry. So, so what do you actually do every <laughs> day? <laughs> um, so I'm the executive director. Um, so essentially, um, I report to our board of directors um, and our board. Um, there's two members from each each community, so two two board members from Decono, from Firestone, from Frederick, and then one at large. So there's seven of them. So I, I'm the lucky one that has seven bosses on any given day. Um, but you know, I I oversee um, a handful of our kind of executive leadership staff. Um, and they oversee more of the operational side of, of everything that we do. So they, you know, I, kudos to them on all the fantastic things we have going. It's, it's all because of their work. Um, so I get, I get involved in um, the operational side, but also, you know, a lot of the just visionary and big picture and where are we going next and you know, our annual action planning of our, our priorities for the year and making sure we're we're staying on track and you know even speaking to being 41 years old as a district just ensuring that that we are producing the product that you know the original voters 40 plus years ago saw the need to have us in the community um, and making sure we're upholding our end of the bargain too um, right because everyone within our boundaries is, is paying for a service. Mm -hmm. um, so we wanna make sure we're giving that high quality service and, and also giving the services that the community wants. Um, so just again, 
the the big picture visionary, uh, making sure we're we're being fiscally responsible with the funding that we're receiving and that we're you know greatly appreciative for, so we're able to do our jobs. Um, I used this tagline the other day with a group, um, and and they thought it's kind of funny, right? Like we we get to we get to work so others can play type of a mentality, right? Too, right? That's exactly um, right. It's it's <laughs> it's a pretty good. Uh, pretty good gig to be into um that, that's a lot of fun um and you get to see a lot of a lot of the reward through our programs and our services and people coming through the front doors of of the building so well a lot of the community members you know hold you in very high regard you know you are you are very well respected and they know that you're doing a great job in the community so yeah we we hear that a lot about you dean yeah, so just great. know that so well, thank you i appreciate that of course so on our last couple minutes here we kind of do some rapid fire and just ask you some rapid fire questions and get to know a little bit more about dean so what is your favorite restaurant here in the carbon valley oh boy favorite restaurant um yep. i would say it it depends um gabe's for breakfast mm -hmm. Uh, Peel has their new lunch menu out with like their like pizza sandwiches, which are which is delicious if you haven't had those. Um, there's so many good restaurants. Um, on, on a Monday, I would say Peppers because they're one of the only, yeah, ones, the only open. ones open. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it might depend on the day. Um, but yeah, so many good choices. Elf, um, Georgia Boys, you, you really can't go wrong. It's funny when we have consultants or contractors up visiting for different projects um after they've been here like once or twice all their meetings are wrapped around um where they want to go to lunch that that, that. given time <laughs> nice. because the the food choices um we're, we're pretty fortunate food choices are really good pretty awesome yeah what's your favorite sport i know you know you're the rec oh, guy question. so you probably have a lot of oh, favorites good question Great um question. anyone that knows me will guess at this one both my girls um play competitive softball okay uh, and I coach one of them, so um, never thought I'd, I'd be that far into the softball world as I am, but um, fast pitch softball. Nice. Okay. Do you golf? I golf. Saddleback yeah. or Bellarosa? Oh, good question. <laughs> oh, you can't throw that question. Yeah, we can. Uh, we'll cut that. We'll cut oh, that. Okay, no, okay. no, we got to hear this. Uh, uh, <laughs> depends if I'm in a hurry or not. How's that? That's right? a great answer. Like, um, hey, that's a great answer. If it's a quick nine, uh, Bella Rosa is, yeah. is definitely the quick nine. And you got a little more time and want to play more than nine, um, go to Saddleback. Hey, I'm with you on that. Have you done the night golf at Bella Rosa before? I have not done it there. It's no. super fun. Yeah. You should, you should take the girls and go. It's just super fun. So, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Um, Favorite 80s rock band? Oh, man. Favorite. Uh, <laughs> That's a good one too. Um, See, we're getting good at these records. Yeah, we you're are. Getting good. Yeah. Bon Jovi. Okay. Nice. Well, so yeah, are you a, do you, are you a reader or a podcast listener? Podcast listener. What's your favorite podcast? Um, the one with the Kelsey brothers. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. The, yeah. Those guys are funny. Those That's a good choice. That's a good choice. All, All right. right. Well, Dean, the pressure's off. We are wrapping up our interview here with you today. Thank you so much for taking some time to spend with us. Um, we're grateful to get your insight on what you guys are doing for the community. Cause like Maxine said, we've heard a lot of great stuff about you. We were really excited to get to know you a little bit more Yeah. and have you just share what's coming up for Carbon Valley. So thank you for spending your time with us today. Yeah, thank you for having me. This was fun. Absolutely. We look forward to seeing you all on your next road to home. All right, bye, bye everyone. Now.